Hey everyone, welcome back to Bucky's Customs. I want to talk about the long mill and some things that maybe you as beginners might be interested in. When I purchased my long mill, I had had some cat experience. So it wasn't like I was going in this blind. I kind of knew a little bit about it. Not a lot, but enough to get me in trouble, I guess you might say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of things that would be beneficial to you as a new owner of the long mill. Or maybe you've had your mill for a while and maybe you never really thought about doing these things, but you'll, you'll appreciate it, hopefully. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So stay with us. I really appreciate you joining us today. But before we go any further, I want to say thank you to this week's sponsor, CNC Labs, the makers of the Long Mill Benchtop CNC, just like the one we use here in our shop. If you're in the market for a CNC machine and you're not really sure what to get, go to their website, cnc.com, and order your mill today. You'll be really happy you did. Now let's get back to our video. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I found that I really couldn't live without anymore. And, you know, um, my I kind of said in the beginning that I had some cat experience, but it really wasn't a great deal of cat experience. It was very minimal. And it kind of gave me a sense of, you know, I guess what a CNC machine does. I didn't really quite understand the language. I didn't understand G code, had no idea. Um, so I guess I was a rookie in this right out of the box. And over the past year and making all these videos and trying to make instructional videos of, so that, you know, maybe some of you out there would appreciate and all that I decided that there was a few things that I want to share that helped me along the way and one big thing was my decimal equivalent chart now I had um, an eight and a half by eleven decimal equivalent chart at the ready all the time I had it over here on my bookcase and if I needed to know the equivalent of a decimal, I would be able to look it up real easy. And as you know, with the long mill and your CAD creating softwares, you kind of need to know the decimal equivalent to your fractions, to your inches. And unless you use metric, and which I don't very often, but I'm starting to learn the more I use the mill because I mean after all this long mill is made in the great country of Canada and they used the metric system so it it's just gonna be easier for me to learn it and that's what I'm gonna strive to do this year this upcoming year so the first thing I did was is I went to Carveco and actually I didn't go to Carveco first I went to the internet and I looked for possible free STLs and I would encourage everyone out there to look for stuff like that. There is a wealth of information on the internet, pictures and drawings and vectors and just so many different things that, you know, you could you can use to create it on your long mill. So, I would encourage you to go do that first, but if you really like creating like I do, you know, go ahead and open up Carveco and start creating what you want to create. 
Now, in this case, it was numbers and letters, you know, a chart, so to speak. And I'll show you what I created initially here was this one here. Now, this is just a 164th down to one inch equivalent chart for decimal. And I carved it on this shelving board and um, it really didn't come out that great. But I'm gonna show you what I did here. And if you'll uh, bear with me, we'll go through a carve co and I'll show you what I did. Okay, here we are at the computer and we are going to open up CarveCo. Now, this comes in and I created this from an image. Let's go back here. I'll show you the original PDF file. Of course, I've added millimeters and I've added headings and all the headers and all that. But initially, it didn't include the grid, grid work and all that. But you can see it's a single line. That's the important thing that I want you to see here. It's a single line. I bring it into CarveCo and it creates a double line. I created a V-Carve toolpath for this. It did not do so well when I showed you that uh, initial carving. It managed to save all the circles, the zero, the sixes, the nines, the fours, anything with a center in it, it managed to save because it was large enough. The material that I showed you there was a shelf. It was basically just particle board underneath, so not very stable wood for that. Perfect for laminating, but not very stable wood for carving into. As a result, we used this one in initial in the initial carve and I didn't like it. So I decided to move on. It still did um, an okay job. It wasn't perfect. I wasn't happy with it. So I moved on to something else. Okay, so that was pretty easy and you know to show you exactly what happened here this board is particle board and it has a really thin paper thin laminate on it it's just a shelving board that you can buy at a home depot or a lowe's and i'm not plugging either one of them i'm just saying because they're the two largest box stores out there and you know that's what i did and it didn't come out too bad but i thought Something's got to be better than this. So I guess what we're going to do is, is at this point, I figured out that, you know, decimal equivalent is okay, but I wanted more. If I'm going to learn the metric system, I need to learn millimeters, which is what everybody uses in this industry. Now, you'll notice I, it's a bigger chart because I've added another column, you know, over here, fraction, decimal, and then right here, millimeters. And you'll notice that it really did not come out that great because it's just the material that I'm using. So I tried it again. And I did it on the back, changed some settings, changed a bit, and it did the same thing. So what I ended up doing was I created another, um, another board. I bought a piece of laminate that was a lot thicker, more for a countertop, glued that together, and cut it to size. Okay. So this is the top to my engine room. I didn't fasten it or anything because I wanted to be able to remove it for now and show it to you. But uh, that's what I ended up doing. I ended up gluing it on a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, really thick. I decided to go with the aluminum finish so that we could match our long mill. I think it came out pretty good.
as you know, I use this side of the long mill in the engine room for the mouse. I sometimes put the keyboard here. I wanted to leave this open, so I put my carve on the other end. And I'll bring this up and show you the carve. You can see that pretty good there. It came out nicely. Now, I also decided that, heck, who doesn't want to know the basics of our speeds and feeds, like at a glance? I know it's hard sometimes to remember different things, but CNC Labs, this great company that I make these videos for, they do a lot of this work for us. And it's on their website. So you can go to their website in the resources section for the long mill and you can get these charts. And that's what I did. I just copied a chart for speeds and feeds for the specific material that's listed. And it came out pretty good. And there is a Carveco uh, file for that as well. Anything that I've done in this video, there's a Carveco file for that I will post in the description below so that you can download that copy. That was the two main things that I wanted to share with you. The third is something that I never thought I would do or need because when I do different projects on the mill, as you know, I have a dead stop here. This is, this is a stop that is parallel to the x-axis on the mill. And I usually place all my projects off of this. Well, there's, the more I do, the more I've found that I really needed a grid pattern, um, a permanent grid pattern. And for the longest time, I say the longest time, for probably three months now I've been avoiding doing it I didn't want to carve it and the reason for that is is because I wanted to do it with our laser we haven't gotten our lasers yet so I decided you know it'd be a, a good part of this video so what I did was is I took a 24 by 24 grid and a one inch grid and I carved it in the dead, you know, off of the dead center of my table, of my carving area. Now, if you don't have the center of your table marked, you probably should do that because it's a great reference point to go to. And I made it a P6 on G Center so that all I have to do is change it to P6 and hit go and it will take me right to the center of the table. And one other thing I wanted to talk about in this particular video, what kind of CNC bits would be beneficial for you to get started with? I'm going to open up my drawer that I have with all my bits in it, and I'm gonna pull out what I have. I don't have a whole lot. As a matter of fact, in the giveaway video, there are three times this amount of bits being given away. So make sure you enter that to win. There's a couple of bits that I think we as new CNC owners need to have. One is an eighth inch flat and an eighth inch ball nose. Those are two that I really believe you need. There's also there's also a quarter inch flat and there's an up cut and a down cut. You'll need both of those in my opinion. There's also a ball nose up cut that you will need. And that takes care of the end mills basically. Now there's a couple of V bits that I think are really important to have. And one is a 90 degree. And the second is a 60 degree. Now, if you want to do finer work, finer V carves, then 
get yourself a 15 degree and add that to your arsenal not necessarily needing to have it right away but it will help you get those finer cuts that you're looking for and also as far as specialty bits I would include a compression bit from CNC labs these compression bits are very very high quality all these bits that they they have are very very high quality and I would recommend that you get a compression bit as well so as far as a surfacing bit CNC has a surfacing bit as well that you can get on their website and that is about it that is pretty much it as far as the bits that you would need to be able to do just about everything that you want to carve now there are specialty bits out there that I'm going to talk about in a future video but these are the ones that I would start with now I know CNC labs has each and every one of these bits available maybe they don't have the 15 degree I'm not really sure uh, this is an Amana 15 degree that I purchased long long time ago it was last year when I purchased this bit and I did it so that I can do the small engraving on the back of my cutting boards for my logo and I would just you know engrave Bucky's customs and that's how I did it with this 15 degree bit so that is it as far as the bits that's about it for this particular video we're going to be getting into uh, some more inlays. As a matter of fact, I've got a Christmas gift that I'm doing for my daughter that I'm going to be doing an inlay video of coming up in a week. And plus there'll be a couple other um, really neat videos that you'll want to see as well. I'm going to be probably drawing the winner for the Cherry Butler package in the next video. I'm hoping to. So you know my goal was to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and I'm a little ahead of schedule thanks to all of you and I really appreciate that it's a great Christmas gift to me if I could reach that goal and and you know we all know what goals do for our lives you have to have goals you have to set goals and you have to set goals that are achievable you don't want to set unrealistic goals and I felt that this was a very achievable goal and it looks like we're gonna get there thanks to all of you if you haven't subscribed to our channel now's the time go ahead and subscribe click the notification bell so you can get notified when I post again I really appreciate everyone's support thank you so much be safe out there